What's up YouTube, it's Sean here and I'm here today to give you guys a review of the Teddy Santis New Balance 990 V3 in this olive leaf colorway. Today's video is brought to you by Heflux. Heflux is my all time favorite sneaker insoles and they sell ETPU insoles which essentially is the same material you'll find in Adidas Boost. So if you're looking to add some additional comfort inside your shoes, be sure to check out their website which I've linked down below in the description box. You'll see they sell a variety of different insoles, so depending on the type of insole density and the cushioning setup you're looking for, you're going to find this is a suitable pair for anyone. So I've been a paying customer of Hefalux for years now, and to me, I personally find them to be extremely comfortable. So if you guys want to check them out and try a pair for yourself, be sure to use the code SEANGO at checkout and get 15% off your entire purchase. So this right here is the final and 16th pair of Season 1 of Teddy Santis' Made in USA New Balance line. Teddy Santis, better known as the founder of Aimé Lyon d'Or, was named the creative director of New Balance's Made in USA line last year, and his first project was releasing 16 pairs of New Balance 990s. So these released on September 9th for a price of 280 Canadian dollars or 200 US dollars. And the style code for the shoe is M990TC3 and the colorway is olive leaf and black. So this, of course, is a Made in USA New Balance, and it's one of the most unique colorways in the Teddy Santa 16. But I think there's a bit of New Balance fatigue, at least for general releases, and at least here in Canada, this pair has been sitting online, which is a very good thing for true New Balance heads out there. So diving into the details of this shoe, the base layer of the shoe on the toe box, this is covered in a black colored mesh. Overlaid on top of this, we have these dark gray reflective 3M panels, and then surrounding the front toe cap, we have this olive green colored suede. And this suede is more of a flat suede, unlike some of the hairier or shaggy suede that Teddy Santis has utilized on past other colorways. This same olive green suede covers the mid panel of the shoe, and the top two eyelets are covered in this black colored TPU plastic. Stitched on top of the mid panel, we have the New Balance N logo, which is done in this reflective 3M finish in silver with an outline of black and white. And then moving downwards, you can see we have more of that black colored mesh and another overlay of dark gray reflective 3M. Wrapping around the bottom of the heel, we have another panel of olive green suede, and we have 990 branding pressed on in this orange color. And then in the middle, we have this perforated black nubuck with this orange and white colored New Balance branding. And the top of the heel is covered in this dark gray reflective 3M with these perforations on either side, and we have Made in USA branding in the center. As for the laces, so these come with two different lace options. And the standard default lace is a flat style lace which is done a bit of a grayish olive tone. And then underneath the laces, the bottom half of the tongue is covered in that same mesh material, and the top is covered in nylon. And unlike your normal 990 V3, for my pair at least, it had a very faint waffle pattern to it, which is probably a quality control issue. And then pressed across it, we have New Balance and USA branding done in silver and orange. The back of the tongue and the interior of the shoe, this is covered in a purple colored mesh material. And then the insoles are done in that same purple color, and we have New Balance branding stamped on the heel in black. So the upper of the 990 V3 sits atop this full length absorbed foam midsole. The midsole is painted in white on the forefoot, light gray on the bottom heel, and we also have New Balance's end cap technology, which is a dual density foam setup consisting of a softer EVA foam core surrounded by a stiffer polyurethane rim, which gives you a good balance of support and softness. And then right above this, surrounding the bottom of the heel, we have this black colored TPU heel clip with New Balance branding, and this helps to give you additional structure and support for the back end of the shoe. Finally, turning this pair over to the bottom, this is just your standard 990 V3 outsole. This is constructed out of a combination of black and gray colored rubber. We have that standard diamond shaped traction pattern on the forefoot, along with these three horizontal grooves to give you added flexibility. And then underneath the rubber, we have this carbon fiber shank plate, which helps with torsional rigidity and midfoot support. So that breaks down the look and the construction of these Olive Leaf 990 V3s. And for those wondering about sizing, to me these fit like most of my other 990 V3s, so I personally prefer to go a half size down. So I'm a true size 10 slightly on the wider side, and I go with a 9.5 in models like the 990 V3, and other made in USA models like the 992, the 990 V4, V5, and a lot of my 550s as well. And in comparison, I stick true to size or size 10 in the 990 V2 and the 997 because I find that those two models have a bit more of a narrow toe box, along with other New Balance silhouettes like the 991, the 1500, the 1530, and a lot of my 2002 R's as well. 
Next up, in terms of the comfort, so you guys probably know how comfortable the 990 V3 is. And this pair feels like any of your other colorways, so it's gonna be a very well-balanced shoe. It's not gonna be overly soft and mushy, but there's a ton of cushioning underfoot, and it still gives you a good amount of support and structure as well. So this is one of those models that I can wear if I'm going on vacation, for example, or if I just know I'm gonna be on my feet for many hours within a day. Finally, in terms of the overall quality and the craftsmanship on this pair, so overall, I thought that the material quality was good, but it wasn't great. Maybe I'm biased because I was expecting maybe more of a shaggier suede, but this flat suede felt pretty good to the touch, but it didn't necessarily wow me. And the use of 3M overlays instead of Nubuck, for example, made it feel a little bit not as premium, but overall, it still was a very solid shoe material-wise. But from an overall craftsmanship standpoint, like I mentioned earlier, the tongue had a bit of a faint waffle pattern to it, so this probably was a quality control issue, and there were some long threads that I had to trim off myself, and there were some glue stains on the TPU on the back heel as well. So it wasn't a perfect release, but when you compare it across other brands, it's still very solid all in all. So with all that out of the way now, let me toss these on feet and I'll show you guys how these look. Overall, I think this is a pretty decent colorway of the 990 V3. It's pretty unique. I like how it kind of resembles the Hulk or Donatello of the Ninja Turtles. But if I had to rank this as part of the Teddy Santa 16 collection, I'd probably put it somewhere between the middle to the upper quarter of that collection. So with that said, is this a must own to have in your collection? Probably not. But if this color combination really speaks to you, then I think you can probably grab these eventually for sale because based on how things are right now, there's pretty much zero hype surrounding this pair. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this Olive Leaf New Balance 990 V3. What are your overall thoughts on this colorway? Do you guys like this color combination of the green, the purple, and the black? Or does it not really work for you? If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, check me out on Twitter at sean.go, and visit my website as well at seangoca so until next time, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.